Hello witches, wizards and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters, welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, creating recipes for every item of food and drink that we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we served up some double chocolate cupcakes with hidden Hogwarts house filling, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if you're new to the kitchen and you want to see some more Harry Potter inspired recipes, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, you've got another to tuck into. We've still got room for one more Christmas dessert, so let's head back into chapter 12, the Polyjuice Potion, to find out what's next. So Harry and Ron are really nervous about this plan. Hermione's trying to reassure them and she's already got her hair from Millicent Bullstrode, which she took off her during the dueling club. They had a little bit of a fight. So Harry and Ron are prepared to put their plan into action. And that's where I can see our next recipe. They lurked in the deserted entrance hall after Christmas tea, waiting for Crabbe and Goyle who had remained alone at the Slytherin table, shoveling down fourth helpings of trifle. You can't finish Christmas dinner without a trifle. If you'd like to recreate my ghostly petrified trifle recipe, then all of the ingredients, measurements and instructions can be found on my website, bradleybakes.co.uk. The link is down below in the description. The end of the year is almost upon us and we're celebrating with trifle, but what a year it's been, as always at Hogwarts. It's been eventful, the Chamber of Secrets were opened, students have been petrified, but one thing that hasn't been petrified is the food. So that got me wondering, what would happen if you petrified a trifle? This week I'm going to show you a fun twist on the classic trifle recipe. We're going to make this as ghost-like as possible, as if it's just been caught by the basilisk. So I'll walk you through how to make a clear jelly. I'm then going to try to make as pale as possible our custard for the middle layer, and then we'll finish it off with some cream and some white chocolate. Our jelly does need time to set though, so let's get started on that. Making the clear jelly is really easy and only requires three ingredients. You want to begin by blooming your gelatin by placing that in a bowl with some cold water and leaving it to one side for five minutes until it blooms. You'll know it's ready once it's lovely and soft. I'm then gonna get myself a heat proof jug and add in my sugar before pouring in a few tablespoons of boiling water. You just want to add enough to dissolve all of that sugar at this point, I'm going to squeeze the excess water off the gelatin, add that into the hot sugar syrup, and then stir that through as well. Then I'm going to top this up with some cold water, and this is a quick way to cool down the temperature so it will set quicker. Traditional trifle is served with sponge cake in the jelly layer, so you can use any cake you like. I'm using the plum cake, which we made earlier on in the series. Check out the link down below in the description if you missed out. I've sliced my cake thinly and then used some cutters to cut out some circles of my cake. Of course, you can just put them in randomly, but I like to add a little bit of decoration when I can. Lay these down into the bottom of your dish and then you want to slowly pour your cooled jelly on top. Once you've got nice even layers of your jelly, this then needs to go into the fridge to set for at least two hours. So our clear jelly layer is almost set, so it's time to move on to making our custard as we need to give this a bit of time to cool down before we place it on top. Now traditionally custard is made with egg yolks, but that's going to give us a really, really yellow colour. So I'm going to take those out and replace them with just the egg whites and then some corn flour to thicken up our custard. That way we'll keep it as pale as possible. I've even found some vanilla extract that is white. So we'll keep this as petrified as we can and then we'll add that on top before the final layer. To make your easy custard for trifle, you want to place a pan on a medium heat and pour in your cream. Gently warm this up, being careful not to burn it. In a separate bowl, I'm going to add in my egg whites, my sugar, my corn flour and my vanilla extract and then whisk that together until it's pale and fluffy. Once it's nice and light and our cream is warmed up, I'm going to slowly pour the cream into the egg yolks, whisking it as I go to make sure they don't scramble. Once everything's nicely incorporated, that needs to go back into the pan and I'm going to keep on whisking that as it heats up and it will begin to thicken. Now 
after about five minutes you should have a lovely thick custard. So I'm going to pour that into a separate bowl, place some cling film over the top and press it down to the surface to prevent the skin from forming and then pop that to one side until it's nice and cool. Once your custard's at room temperature you can then gently spoon that over your jelly layer. I like to pipe the custard over the top of the jelly to make sure I get nice even layers. So I'm going to pour that into a piping bag, cut off the end and then pipe away. Once you've evened that all out, you can then take a spoon to level it down. Level it off and then that can go back into the fridge for 15 to 20 minutes. So our petrified trifle is shaping up nicely and we've got one final layer, which is our whipped cream. This is already gonna be white, so we don't need to do any magic tricks here. I'll flavor that with some icing sugar and vanilla and then we'll pipe it on top. I'm also gonna finish these with a little bit of white chocolate, just because I have no reason, I just love chocolate. <laughs> this is the last few steps. To make your easy whipped cream for trifle, just place your double cream, icing sugar and vanilla into your bowl. I'm then going to whisk this until it forms soft peaks. Be careful not to over whisk it, otherwise you'll end up with butter. That's not too bad though, the link will be down below in the description if you want to learn how to make some Hogwarts house butters. I then placed a star nozzle onto the end of my piping bag and filled it with my whipped cream. Generously pipe this on top of your custard and then you can prepare your chocolate. For this I'm just going to create some quick shavings by turning my chocolate bar over and running a sharp knife along the back. You can then place these curls on top of your trifle and with that our petrified clear trifle is complete. I hope Nearly Headless Nick's not too jealous that we didn't serve these at his death day party. So if you've ever wondered what trifle would look like if it was petrified, wonder no more. This is our Harry Potter twist on the traditional trifle recipe. We've packed it full of fun, a clear jelly, white custard, white cream and white chocolate. It's super easy to make and it tastes amazing too. Let me know down below in the comments if you're going to give this one a go. That's all for this week's recipe but if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen then make sure you hit that subscribe button, click on the notification bell, then you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I'm off to enjoy my trifle and I'll see you next time.